Hello everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at variables, all of the different types and how to use them. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So before we start using variables, let's have a look at the different types of variables and why and how to use them. So first off, we have global variables. And global variables are global in the sense that they live inside of your project and are not scene specific. Um, when we look at local variables, they reside in a game object. So local variables are scene specific. These variables are scene specific as well. And we'll have a look at when you can use them as they are quite amazing and have a different type of function. So first off, when we have a look at local or global variables, we will see that the options we have in local or global variables are pretty much all the same. So we have bool, color, number, game object, etc., etc. And when we have a look at local variables, we have the exact same options. There's honestly just no difference here other than the fact that they reside in your scene or they are residing in your projects globally. So why would you use one or the other? One of the easy examples would, for example, be a character customization tool you created in a main menu and you want to carry over all of those options into a new scene. Simply put, local uh, global variables are the way to go here because they can carry over across scene they are not specified to your scene and you can just load them in into a new scene one of the easiest things to do second thing would be management as you can see you know the i don't have that many global variables yet and it's already filling up the preferences window quite a bit and it can be a bit hard once you start start adding a lot of them to manage these Another reason would be if we would have an impact location, for example, on an enemy when we use the shooter module to shoot him, and we have multiple enemies in the scene, and we could actually shoot all of them at the same time. Now, one global variable can only store one location, and if it happens at the same time, it will have to pick one of those locations, and it can't store all of them at the same time. This is a case where local variables would be a solution because the local variable would reside on the enemy object itself and store its own location, um, which is where we wouldn't use global variables. Another reason to use local variables rather than global variables is if they can be used on a prefab you are using. So the end, like the enemy I mentioned, you will turn this into a prefab and because you are copying it over, um, storing it and everything that happens specifically tied to that prefab can just be stored in the same location. It doesn't need to be global. Now let's have a look in an actual scene why we would have to use variables at all, what the point is. So I'm going to add a game object to, and let's just do a trigger straight away, um, to my player here, getting rid of the collider. And um, this trigger would be key on key down add conditions and the key would be um, C. Now once I press C, I want to draw a weapon or holster a weapon. So if I select draw weapon here, the condition would very simply be shooter module is armed yes or no true or false if he's unarmed i want him to draw let's copy this over if he is armed i want him to holster and that's it really plain and simple now what if i want to use this same key button and i don't want to draw a weapon but i want to go into crouch now I would remove those actions and I'm going to use a state and that's the thing, crouching is a state just like swimming would be a state, um, sprinting would be a state, flying would be a state. So I'm going to select crouch here and in the other scenario 
I want that to reset. Now, what would be the condition in this case? Because, well, there's nothing that, you know, is related to crouching whatsoever because it's, you know, our own custom state. It's not predefined. So we want to be able to know somehow, are we crouching, yes or no? And that's exactly the same as we are doing with the shooter module. So are we armed, yes or no? But in this case, there are no conditions that, you know, check that for us. So this would be a case where we would use a variable. But we don't have that variable yet. And where are we going to store that variable? Now we can do this in a global, um, global function, as in this case, it would only be for the player. And that would be completely fine. However, it is also unnecessary to use space in our preferences window, which is already not that big if we don't need to. And in this case, the crouch and pressing C would only refer to our player object. So we can just simply add a local variable here. Bull. That is crouch. And by default, when we start a game, we are not crouching. Um, we are standing, so it would be false. So let's select local variable here. Drag in our trigger. Crouch, false. So if I press C and we are not crouching, we are going to crouch. I can copy over this condition and select true. If we are crouching, I want it to reset. Now I still need to define that bool, so the bool still needs to be filled in. So let's select the local, drag it in, crouch, and do the opposite. So if we are crouching, I want crouching to be turned off once I press C, and I want them to stand up, so reset. If we are not crouching, I want crouch to turn on when I press C, and I want this to um, go into crouch mode. Now it's important that you always put that bool on top, um, that way there's absolutely no delay um, between the states. If you are doing this later, and there's like here a transition, technically between that period when I, you know, press C real fast, I could actually cause this to uh, well have some issues. So always make sure that bool is at the top. And yeah, that's it really. So let's save and let's give this a go. So I'm going to select my trigger where we have our bool. And as you can see, the value by default is false. I'm going to press C and it's going to be true. False, true, false, true. And that's it. So this is a really easy way to use variables, but it's also one of the, um, well, pretty much necessary ways to use it in a case like this. So, you know, that's one of the things, uh, one of the ways you can do this. Now another way to use those variables and where you will see this quite often is actually in actions and triggers. So if I select a trigger here and I select on receive shot, you will see this option. So we can store the shooter and store the impact. Now why would you want to be able to store the shooter? Um, think, for example, in a game, if you have a type of counter-attack or something like that, um, if someone shoots you, you, you know, attack back, you know, you want to know which, which character attacked you. Um, not the best example, but it's, you know, something. Um, and store the impact position is where we would actually store where um, we would want a certain effect to happen. So an impact position like this, shot impact, is a location. So this is not the best way to do it, but I just want to show how it works. Vector tree, and we can then select local variable. Um, we have player invoker game object. 
So we can select player and just use the name. So shot position. And if we would select the game object, we have shot position here. You can also use player directly and then you have to type it. Um, obviously this is, you know, more prone to mistakes as your spelling has to be perfect, but you know, it's another way you could do it or you just use the game object. Now, why would you use player instead of game object? And that's more related to um, if you are creating prefabs out of this and you want to drag drop those in a scene, um, as the game object is not specified if it's a prefab, um, you could use the player instead because it will always look for that player object. So one of the ways to do it. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons. And you will see several actions have this as well. So if, for example, um, let me remove these as we no longer need them. So if we go into crouch, for example, um, and we want to instantiate um, we want to instantiate an effect and we want to destroy that effect once we go back out of crouch we can um, what could we use do I have fx a bubble let's say a bubble and we want that to instantiate once we go into crouch I have no idea why we would use a bubble but you know just as an example um, and once we go out of crouch, we want that um, particle effect to be destroyed. Now, because I'm instantiating, I can't really refer to it because it's not in our scene yet. So we could go back to our trigger here, um, add a game object. So particle effect. Select game object. drag in our trigger and select our particle effect here. Then here we select local variable, drag in our trigger again and we select our particle effect. Now let me check if this bubble is actually, um, it's not, so I'm going to select this to uh, loop so it will always be, um, always be present. Let's go into our play mode. Perfect. So I'm going to press C and we have this bubble and it's, you know, it keeps looping. And as you can see here, it's now in our hierarchy. It got instantiated. And now I want this to stop. So I'm going to press C again and the particle effect is gone. And that's simply because I stored it in a place where these actions can find it. And that's another really good reason to use variables, um, as you can see quite clearly. So list variables, why would we be using list variables? So I'm going to add a list variable here. Perfect. I'm going to add a cube. Cool. Perfect. So we have six cube in our scenes now. So I'm, uh, I need, oh, I need those here as well. So let's drag them in. Perfect. So these refer to all of these um, game objects. And what I want to do now is I'm going to add a trigger here. Let 
let's get rid of that collider. So on start, and it's going to be really simple, I'm going to move my player. I'm going to select variable, list variable. I'm going to drag in that list variable here. And I want him to move to a random position. So let's do one. And I'm going to hit play. And let me actually, let me do this the right way. Let's, uh, let's set all of them to trigger so they won't have a collider. Ah, it's not repeating. Apologies about that. There we go. And as you can see, I hit play mode now and he's actually going to a different object. And basically he's randomly picking a location to go to. Now for the player itself, obviously in this case, this would be, you know, less interesting. Um, but for NPCs, this is actually something really useful as you don't want, or, you know, most likely um, won't want your NPCs to always act exactly the same. You want to be able to randomize this. This would be a good way to do it. Um, list variables allow you to randomly pick or actually use next, previous. Um, if you check out my character creation video, uh, character customization video, you will see that I use list variables quite often actually for customization as well. As list variables allow you to store a bunch of objects in a list order, so I can use next, previous from that list, or randomize things. So in my um, easy template kit asset, I use list variables as well in order to randomize loot drops as they will randomly pick, um, you know, pick something from list. Next time you will hit play, um, it won't be the same. These, this order will be different. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, incredibly useful. It's really hard to, you know, um, just demonstrate a bunch of different things we can do here. Um, I use this in a lot of videos and those examples I just mentioned are good examples of why you would use this. Now obviously sometimes, like we're seeing here, um, he keeps going to the same two. That's because, well, it can happen in random. So yeah, that's the power of list variables. Um, and the interesting thing here is, as you can see, we have our index options in the list variable. We can use first, last, previous, current, and next. And as you will develop your game, you will see that there's actually a lot of use cases as to why you would use this. So really cool, really useful. Um, yes, you can store local variables and uh, list variables um, as a prefab as well. Just keep in mind that they then can't refer to localized objects. So I could store a local variable with a bunch of bools or numbers or anything like that easily in as a prefab. I can't really do that if it's going to specify to game objects that reside in a scene. So something to keep in mind, yes, you can actually use um, those as, you know, as global objects as well, kind of, in a way, not really. But yeah, you can store them as prefabs, use them across scenes. Um, so for example, if you would use a um, list variable to instantiate random you know, particle effects, for example, no problem as long as those particle effects are prefabs as well. If you wanted to instantiate based on what is currently in the scene, you can't really use it across scene because they will specify to specific localized game objects in your current scene. So something to keep in mind, but you know, local variables and list variables are actually really useful, really powerful, and don't refer too much to just having a ton and ton of global variables where you don't need to. 
So hope this was useful in a way. Um, you know, obviously there's tons more you can do with this, but I wanted to highlight a bit how great these truly are. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.